Good morning, friends. I hope you're all having a wonderful day out there in your gardens. Today we have a really special guest garden tour. We're headed over to Ireland to visit the gardens of Spuds and Roses. This is a fabulous YouTube channel that gardens on one acre on clay rocky soil and their land slopes. They have wonderful aerial views of their garden and they've sectioned their one acre into different garden rooms. This garden features a kitchen garden, a cottage garden, a formal rose garden, an orchard, chickens, a green roof, and so much more. So without further ado, let's head over to Spuds and Rose's garden. Hello and welcome to our home garden in southwest of Ireland. My name is Mayu and this is my gardening companion. <laughs> so this is Snowy or Spots as he is now called because of our YouTube channel. I'm really excited to be showing you through our growing spaces today. But before we do this, let me just give you a little background on our location. We're positioned to the Atlantic coast side of Ireland, not too far from the famous Killarney National Park and Mockcross House and Gardens, and even the Blarney Castle is quite close. Now, our summers are cool and winters are mild, but it usually rains a lot throughout the year. And we're quite exposed and it's constantly windy, which you will probably notice now throughout the video as well. Also, we're gardening in the middle of the countryside on rocky, heavy clay and on an elevated and sloped site. And our acre of a space is a mix between open grass areas, ornamental gardens and edible growing areas. We have a small orchard with apple, pear, plum and cherry trees, uh, where I'm at the moment. Our hens roam freely and there is plenty of room for football practice. So overall, it is a, quite a family-friendly garden. Now, a garden is nothing as grand as the famous gardens I mentioned earlier, but it is our secret hideaway. It is also under constant development, and one of the newest additions to the ornamental areas is the next space we're going to, which is a freshly planted cottage garden. The plants here are very young and yet to fill the growing space, but it is already showing so much potential. There's a beautiful mix between the David Austin roses and herbaceous perennials. And my main focus was just to gather as many pollinator friendly plants as possible. And this is why you would see a lot of salvias and nepetias here. There are also verbena bonariensis, hydrangeas, astilbes, a lot of sedums, a lot of achillea or yarrow in here as well. So basically all of these real popular cottage garden themed plants. Now the couple of plants that I had in this space already is likes of the flowering climbing rose in the background. There's a couple of hydrangeas, there's a doitzia that's flowering at the moment and then a big, well actually quite huge white bodleia or butterfly bush and this is yet to open its flowers but it will be covered with butterflies once it does. And from the very centre of this garden you'll actually get a beautiful vista through the rose garden into the kitchen garden, which I love. And I could really see myself, perhaps even early in spring, get a bench in here and just have a beautiful view all the way down the garden. The spaces here are divided by large home beam hedges just to slow down the wind gusts we get. And it also gives the space a really nice private feeling. Now, the rose garden was actually the very first area that was purpose built and the reason for it was how it just links in with our living room windows and i just wanted to be able to look at the flowers from the inside of the house and that's why the garden area spans across the front of these three large panes of glass and again the hornbeam hedges provide a privacy screening around it now, at the moment, the Shirley Temple um, peonies are in full flower and will probably only grace us with these really large blooms for another week or 
to, but all of the roses are repeat flowering and I've also started to add new herbaceous plants to complement the roses in these planters. Some salvias and nepeters here and together with the lavenders, they I think they balance the pink and red colours nicely. And I'm sure you could see that beautiful um, climbing rose, new dawn behind me as well. And the scent is just heavenly, which is actually with all the roses that are here. They are just all so beautifully scented. Now, unfortunately, we don't get that much of a beautiful weather to be able to enjoy this little barbecue area. But when we do get it and we do enjoy the barbecues, we are still surrounded with plenty of mixes of roses. There's lilies and some clematis as well. I have more roses in the pots um, that are yet to open. There's another couple of open and all the or oriental lilies are uh, to open here as well. But the sort of real deep colored lilies have opened there. And the pergola behind me is just absolutely covered with clematis montana grandiflora. And there's another white clematis running across it and more climbing roses going up the pergola as well. So you are still continuing with the theme of sort of flowers and roses, a bit of a herbaceous planting here. And then we gently go into the edible side of it, the kitchen garden side of it. And as I've been walking through the garden, I'm actually getting slower and slower in levels as well. So the orchard and cottage garden were the highest point of the garden. Then um, there's another step down from the rose garden. There's another step down in here and then going towards the greenhouse part of it. And all the way down the field, it, there's a massive level change. But this kitchen garden otherwise is directly linked with our kitchen, hence the name of it. And it's really nice to nip out here and pick a herb or two as you're cooking or just bring in more ingredients. It does not get fresher than this. I do like following the ideas of permaculture and at the same time the Victorian era vegetable growing as well. So there is a bit of contradiction going on in my mind when I'm growing um, vegetables, but I do practice a little bit of both. And the more I learn, the more I adjust it to suit our own family and how our overall life is going, what we should be eating more or what's easier to grow and so on. But everything, what we try to do is organic from the ornamentals all the way to the vegetable growing. Most of the kitchen garden is planted up now. The peas, beans, we have beetroot growing, kale, sweet or rotabaga, celery, carrots in here, a lot of buckets of potatoes, and slightly more uncommon vegetables are the masho, oka, and yakon, where you would eat their tubers in winter. But we also have sweet corn, summer squashes, pumpkins, everything is planted. So, so all we're waiting for now is um, when they get ready. And then we do have sweet peas, chamomile, cosmos, calendula, lupins planted for their flowers. And of course, the showstopper of this huge nepeta here in the middle, right next to me. This is multiple of plants placed in a row. And originally I had them growing in the rose garden where they also look fantastic, but they were just too vigorous for the roses. So I moved them here. And this is a variety called Six Hills Giant and it is at the peak of its first flush of flowers as it will continuously keep flowering until frosts. It's absolutely adored by bumblebees, stunning color and definitely an eye catcher. From the edible side, we also have a small polycarbonate greenhouse where I grow tomatoes, sweet peppers and chilies. And this space is perfect for extending the seasons and to overwinter more delicate plants, both ornamental and edible ones. And as a final feature to the ornamental plants is this green roof, providing a visual aspect to our shed roof and uh, at the same time supporting biodiversity. It has a selection of sedums, 
dwarf dianthus and creeping flux growing on it. And this concludes our little garden tour. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a pleasure to show you around and thank you, Danielle. Well, thanks so much, Mayu, for sharing your absolutely stunning gardens with us. And also, I just love your passion for organic gardening and your concentration on the wonderful benefits of gardening for mental health. You know, when I first checked out this YouTube channel, I went to the description section of her page, and she really puts a lot of emphasis on gardening in order to take care of our mental health. And once I read that, I immediately reached out to her and asked her if she would mind doing a tour for us today. So would you join me in the comments section in thanking Spuds and Roses for this amazing garden tour? 